Welcome to Gen Z Deep Dive. Today we're going to talk about March Madness basketball and is Gen Z watching? Let's find out. So way back in the day, you know, three years ago, a guy by the name of Josh Safran, Gen Zer, 19 years old at the time, he and his friends decided to host a virtual March Madness because of that little thing that nobody's heard about called COVID-19. So Josh Safran, a basketball fan, media studies student, along with his friend Jackson Waymer, decided to create a virtual March Madness tournament using the discontinued NCAA college basketball game on Xbox 360. With sports events canceled due to COVID-19, they wanted to entertain other sports fans by streaming their entire virtual tournament on Twitch. Safran and Waymer spent two weeks learning how to stream and set up a bracket, eventually launching a mock Selection Sunday special from Waymer's basement. The stream was lighthearted and wholesome, featuring skits, a green skin, a green screen, and humorous commentary. The event drew more than 4,600 concurrent viewers, making it a successful stream, especially considering its last minute conception. The virtual tournament helped fill the void left by the absence of live sports events and allowed the friends to showcase their creativity and resourcefulness during the quarantine period. So, that's a fun little flashback, but bringing this up to more of the present day topic of is Gen Z watching college basketball and March Madness? Well, according to a report by the Morning Consult, they are. Interest in watching the NCAA men's college basketball tournament, or March Madness as we commonly know it, is on the rise for the first time since 2018, according to the Morning Consult. The survey found that 35% of U.S. adults plan to watch the tournament this year, a 6 percentage point increase from 2022. Among those planning to watch, 58% said they would watch via cable or satellite TV, while 46% said they would watch through a streaming provider. The number of Americans planning to fill out at least one March Madness bracket reached a record high of 23%, an 8 percentage point increase from the previous year. Additionally, betting interest has seen a significant jump too, with 14% of respondents planning to place bets on individual games or outcomes during the tournament, a 6 percentage point increase from 2022. So millennials have the highest interest in betting on March Madness, with 24% planning to wager followed by 22% of Gen Z adults and 11% of Gen Xers. With the rise in interest, it's likely that viewership and engagement with the tournament will also increase. So our takeaway from this is that the advent of sports betting has likely had a positive impact on the viewership of college basketball and March Madness. Overall, it appears that just as historically most people are interested in watching the men's March Madness, women's March Madness is also experiencing changes in this new climate. Interest in the NCAA March Madness college basketball tournaments currently favors the men's tournament with 30% of U.S. adults planning to follow it somewhat or very closely. For the women's tournament, 17% say they will follow the games at least somewhat closely, with only 5% indicating very closely. Year over year, interest in the men's tournament has decreased by 6 percentage points, while the decline for women's games is, unfortunately, more significant, falling 9 percentage points from 2022. Gen Z adults still show the most interest in the women's tournament, but the percentage has dropped dramatically since 2022. About 24% of Gen Z adults aged 18 to 24 plan to follow the women's tournament at least somewhat closely, a decrease of 36 percentage points from 2022. Despite the de 
declining interest in March Madness, NCAA women's basketball interest has grown compared to other women's sports. Women's college basketball tops all women's sports leagues, with interest in watching it increasing by five percentage points since uh, a study conducted by Civic Science's last data check-in. The recent viewership milestone for women's college basketball games suggests that the sport's interest isn't solely due to the tournament's popularity, as regular season games have also been record-breaking on TV with audiences and their increased viewership. So a question might be now, with an increase in viewership specifically with men's March Madness and Gen Z tuning into women's March Madness, what are brands doing? How are they staying involved in this important sports event? Well, brands such as ESPN, Pizza Hut, Great Clips, and Continental Tire are leveraging social media and are connected in TV to engage with college basketball fans during both the men's and women's tournaments. The strategies being implemented include using a multi-screen experience to target younger audiences through platforms like social media, capitalizing on nostalgia like Pizza Hut bringing back its many playable basketball from the 1990s, utilizing college athletes in advertising campaigns followed by the NCAA's policy change in 2022 through the NIL agreement, launching campaigns before the tournament to avoid competing with action on the court and extending the life of the content, and employing different social media channels to create a 360 degree fan experience and broaden the reach to audiences not typically watching TV. So by combining nostalgia, multi-platform marketing, and college athlete partnerships, brands can increase awareness and engage with fans during March Madness. So the question we want to ask is, some of the data that we've covered today is for pretty much all adults with some millennials and Gen Z sprinkled in. So the question is, what more might be done to connect with Gen Z? Well, to engage Gen Z during March Madness, brands should enhance the game experience rather than interrupting it with advertisements. Utilize mobile and social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. And let's be mindful that Facebook and Instagram are, and Twitter are probably going to be a little bit more millennial focused. Uh, Twitter is going to have a strong Gen Z presence too. I kind of misspoke a little bit there. Uh, we also might consider platforms like TikTok to more engage Gen Z, Gen Z. Offer interactive features like Snapchat's trash talk history to make Gen Z feel part of the competition. Collaborate with Gen Z influencers from popular YouTubers to podcast hosts to promote brands and provide exclusive deals, promos, and incentives to make them feel like winners. If we can understand what Gen Z's preferences are, then brands will be able to use these cues to better interact and create a holistic experience for Gen Z viewers. So glad you could hang out with us today on this episode of Gen Z Deep Dive. Please give us a like, a click, or a follow. Look forward to connecting with you in the future.